What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla SPY in the overall markets. I want to talk about some things about the RoboTaxi events and why Tesla's looking very prime for upside approaching the big event on Thursday. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 in total. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75. The offer ends very soon in just about three weeks. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with Tesla. So the daily chart of Tesla is looking quite bullish because we have this nice looking candlestick. We have this nice cap to fill up here as well. And we reclaimed our 20 EMA very, very nicely. So you could see right here, uh, Tesla got this rejection back in like August, right? And we came down to our 200 EMA. We bounced off of this. Then we came down just under our 50 EMA. We bounced off that. And since then, it's been riding above its 20 EMA. It finally came down to it only to rebound and we saw buyers defend it. So this is a good sign that Tesla's holding up very, very nicely. We're making higher lows on the chart. We're uptrending very well. And there's going to be a lot of hype and anticipation about this whole global taxi event. So I think that Tesla's going to look bullish approaching the big event. Tesla has this gap to fill more upset potential. But the question now is, will it remain bullish after the event will it be you know bearish afterwards we don't know for sure that depends on what's like announced and such so i want to talk more about that a little bit later on but let me first talk about the markets as a whole i'm going to talk about some important news about them and i'll break down tesla so for tomorrow for those who are interested in trading other stocks this also affects tesla which is why i'm going over all of this uh tomorrow is going to be monday october 7th 2024 at 11 30 a.m eastern standard time that's new york time in the usa uh, we have the three and six month bill auctions coming out then we have Bowman, Kashkari, and Bostic all giving speeches from the Fed. But that's pretty much it for Monday. There's not, not anything else that's too crazy. One more thing for Monday is that we also have on Monday, which is tomorrow, we have the AI event for NVIDIA. So if you're interested in playing NVIDIA, you could watch for that. Then on Tuesday, we have like Amazon's Prime events that's coming out. Uh, for Wednesday, just know that uh, for Tuesday, Tuesday, there's not really much data coming out. And then for Wednesday, we have some important data coming out. Uh, Wednesday is when we have the FOMC minutes. Thursday is when we have CPI data coming out. And then Friday is when we have PPI data alongside some big earnings. On Friday, we also have JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, BlackRock all announcing earnings. But until then, everything's going to be very quiet for Monday. So just to clarify, Monday has no significant earnings. Everything's very minor. Uh, we have NVIDIA's AI event for Monday. So if you're interested in watching NVIDIA, that's going to be a nice play. And then for data, there's not really much for Monday. It's just a couple of bill auctions and a bunch of Fed speakers. We do have more data coming out later on during the week, but for now, Monday is going to be very quiet. So I just want to clarify that. One more thing is that with the whole situation involving Iran and Israel, right, the tensions are still very high. So we'll see how things develop over the weekend, overnight, or going into Monday. We'll see if anything happens. As of right now, we're just waiting to see if there is a massive retaliation and when it ends up happening. So far, it hasn't happened. So we're just waiting. And for the time being, if things remain as is going into tomorrow, there's a good chance the market could continue to hold up. For other factors out there, we also have the fear and greed index currently at greed. We're very close to the extremes, so we're doing a good job at holding up. Momentum is at greed. It could be reaching the extremes as the market continues to push. When, we, when it comes to um, the puts and call option ratio, greed is making up the majority of sentiment. We're at a very, very important phase, which could lead to a little bit more of a shift options are still at greed so we will see if that shifts as we approach our data and then volatility the vix is looking a little bit weaker it might get very close to, to its 50 daily moving average that could lead to more downside for it anyways for tesla assuming things remain the same we don't get like a massive attack or anything like that uh about israel as long as they, they don't attack like the oil facilities it should be okay but if they do end up doing that that could affect crude which could affect the markets so just be careful with that external piece of news if we ignore all the external pieces of news and we just focus on Tesla now. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the RoboTaxi event. So many analysts are saying that Tesla may be unveiling some new vehicles, a Tesla van, for example, the $25,000 EV, the RoboTaxi, and all these different things. I think that if Tesla comes up with a $25,000 EV, it's going to be very huge in China, especially with the price wars that go on. Uh, then a Tesla van would be absolutely fantastic. I, I would love to, to see one of those, ride in one of those, you know, very, very cool stuff. But if anything, this is going to be very important for Tesla. We're going to be watching to see what they tell us about the robo-taxi. Tesla's getting closer and closer to solving autonomy. And I personally believe they will 
achieve it very, very soon. But some different companies and different analysts have different views. Some people think that Tesla won't be using RoboTaxi until like 2030. Others are saying it's going to be much sooner. So we will have to wait and see. But what's very unique about Tesla is they're not just using them in specified areas. It's not like you're just using the RoboTaxi in like Palo Alto and just some cities like that. This is going to be able to be used all over the USA. That's a big difference. It's a, a computer with a brain, and they're just going to continue to improve their different functionalities for it. So I, I would love to see what they end up announcing about it. And if they give us any dates or estimates or even new models, that would be very bullish for Tesla. So we'll see how that ends up coming out as. So we have high expectations, though, because remember, Tesla delayed the event. It was supposed to be in August. It's been delayed a little bit. So we have a very high expectations I can't wait to see what they tell us. And let's hope Tesla meets those expectations to really start running. If they don't meet expectations, it could get a rug pull. So be careful after the RoboTaxi event. Volume should be going up tomorrow. It's currently at 85.6 million. It should be going up closer to the average to 90 million plus tomorrow. And short volume is down. It might continue to remain low as buyers step in. Truth Securities gave Tesla a hold rating, whereas Morgan Stanley's giving them an overweight rating. On top of this, the price risk ratio is trying to push a little bit higher. It's on a bit of an uptrend, so Tesla's gaining a lot of strength. And on top of all of this, just know that when it comes to seasonality, Mondays tend to be green about 53% of the time historically, so it's a good chance Tesla has a green day tomorrow. And then for hourly seasonality, we tend to be green during the first hour of the day. There tends to be more volatility. Also at 1 p.m. and then during the second to last hour of the day, Tesla tends to be the most volatile. So watch it very closely during those times. October is historically a weaker month for Tesla, but this hinges upon what happens with the RoboTaxi event. So I want to make that very clear. We will have to wait and see. With that being said, what is my view of Tesla? What do I think is going to happen? Let's just focus on the technical analysis side of things from this point on. So overall, uh, like I said before, Tesla is doing a good job at holding up, and I think there's a good chance we continue to do what we're doing. I think there's a good chance Tesla tries to fill the gap that's well above, and then it's going to try to rally. The daily looks more bullish as we have that gap to fill. We're also forming a nice, uh, you know, inverse head and shoulders. And then when you look at the four-hour time frame, you will see that when I zoom out like this, this is once again forming a nice cup like structure. So the full measured move would take this all the way up to about the 270 areas. So there's a lot more upside potential. And our PPO is turning more bullish as we're trying to break past our 20 EMA. So hypothetically, okay, if there's bad news, you want to see Tesla lose 247.3. If we lose 247.3, Tesla could be dumping back down to 244. Okay, that's your more bearish case. If you're bullish, you want to see Tesla hold above 249.72. As long as we hold above that, we're looking for a push to fill this imbalance in the gap all the way up into around uh, the 257 plus area. So in my opinion, Tesla might start off kind of shuffling over here. There might be a little dip to grab liquidity around 247 to 248. Might dip a little bit. Then we should be looking for an attempt to push all the way up to about 257 very, very soon. As long as there's no bad news, I think Tesla will be doing that. I think the odds greatly favor Tesla going up to about 257 plus, and eventually all the way up towards 270 as the days go on. So I favor upside for Tesla. I think the odds favor that approaching the RoboTaxi event with all the hype that's associated with that, and we look more bullish. Now for SPY, the four hour and the daily look more bullish, but just know a couple of things. So 573 is a tough resistance. So is 574 to 575, and then 577 above that. We have some tough resistance approaching. We have support to watch for at 572. If that fails us, we go back down to 570, very close to our 20 EMA, and then 568 below that. If 568 fails us, we go back down to low at 565, and then losing that turns us more bearish, and this thing is going to dump. But we haven't lost 568 to 565 yet, so the chart remains more bullish. So with that being said, what do I think is going to happen tomorrow? Well, I went over some key levels, but I think what could happen is we might gap down a little bit very close to this resistance right over here, and then there should be a nice little push coming in an attempt to get back up to 573, if not the all-time high. So I favor a little bit of a dip and a bounce and attempt to get back up closer to all-time highs as the most likely case in my opinion for SPY. So I think that's going to happen. That's what my view is. For ES, just like SPY, it's looking more bullish. Now, if we hypothetically lose... Okay, 57.80, we're looking for a dip back down towards 57.50. We also, we also have resistance at 5,800. If that breaks, we're looking for 58.25. My gut is telling me that this is going to try to push up for 58.25. There's a very, very good chance this attempts to get that push. Uh, I think what's going to happen is we gap down. We kind of dip a little bit to 57.80 tomorrow, maybe a little bit around that area. And look for an attempt to bounce, and we're going to try to break past 5,800 again, kind of consolidate in this range a lot. But I think we will eventually try to attempt to get up to all-time highs. I think ES has potential to still push more, so long as there's no bad news tomorrow. For others out there, we have NVIDIA. 
Nvidia looks more bullish because when you look at the trend like this, we're breaking resistance, and then we have a nice double bottom like structure right over here. So it's doing a good job at holding up. If we end up losing two supports, so 121.75 and 120, we turn more bearish, it's going to be a rug pull. If we manage to break past resistance, we're looking for 120, 126, 127 is our resistance. If that breaks, we're going up to 130. My gut is telling me that we have a, a, a low right here. We're coming up, making a higher low, another higher low. And this is going to try to push for that 127 area. So I think NVIDIA looks more bullish and 127 is very probable. So look for more upside in my personal opinion. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin looks a little bit more bullish. If we lose... Um, 62,000 and then 61,700 return more bearish. As long as we hold above 62,400, though, we favor the upside direction. There's an imbalance to fill above like this, and we're forming a very, very nice looking structure. So I think this is favoring the 63,000 plus area that's coming very soon at the very least. So 63,000 is where we have previous support becoming resistance, and 63,800 is our next resistance as well. So I think the odds favor upside. I think Bitcoin's going to try to push even higher. For other factors out there, we also happen to have. Um, let me just double check. NQ, NQ looks more bullish. It looks clearly, clearly more bullish unless we lose 20,050. So if 20,050 breaks, we're going back down to 19,800. If we hold above that, we're looking for an attempt to get back up to about 20,300. This starts favoring a little bit of a dip in an attempt to get up to 20,300. So I think NQ has more upside potential. So as of right now, the trust favoring the upper direction for this imbalance fill so far, so good for the QQQ. This is looking more bullish. Uh, we're doing a very good job at holding up. We actually got back above our key EMA, especially the 50 EMA, and we're doing a great job at holding up. So looking at the daily chart real quick on the QQQ, for those who are interested, uh, it looks a little bit more bullish if we manage to hold and get back above 488. Then we have this gap to fill all the way up in the 490 area. So I think 490 is going to be our target at the very least for this to continue to go. When you look at the four hour time frame on the QQQ, okay, we look more bullish. We could, and just to be very clear, as long as we don't lose 482, uh, 482, we remain more bullish. If 482 fails us, this is going to be dumping back down to 478. But this chart is looking more bullish. It's trying to get bought back up, forming a nice cup. Might dip a little bit, get very close to about the 485s tomorrow. Now look for an attempt to bounce back up to 490 plus. Look for a dip and a bounce is the most likely case. And as of right now, the triple Q is looking more bullish. Apple's looking more bullish from a nice accumulation right over here. If we hypothetically end up losing 224, we're looking for a dip for 222. And if that fills us, we have that gap to fill below, which would take us much lower to 220. If we manage to hold above 226.6 now, we're looking for a pushback up to this imbalance, taking us up to about 230 per share. 230 is very probable for Apple, so I favor upside, so we'll see how this ends up going. Now, for the rest of the tickers, we have Palance here, which is looking more bullish. If we manage to break past 40, we're looking for 42 as our potential target. Uh, I think that it might dip a little bit since 40 is a big psychological level where profit taking may happen. And we could actually dip closer to about the 38.37 area. So into the 38, so you might be dipping. And then we could be bouncing off that and continuing to, for 40 and eventually 42. So I think a little dip in a bounce is very possible. And there is upside potential nonetheless. For other factors out there, we have basically Supermicro. Supermicro is doing a good job at holding up as we're trying to make higher lows, but simultaneously we have this tough resistance, which is making us kind of like range bound. So if we lose 40, we're looking for 38. If we break past 42.76, we're looking for a push for 45. We're stuck in the middle going back and forth and back and forth. So look for a little bit of a dip towards 38, then a bounce back up for 44. So some, some more like sideways price action is what I'm kind of like anticipating. And so I think it's going to pan out as time goes on. For Rivian, we're trying to rebound. We'll have to see if we could break past 10.69. If that breaks, we're looking for basically 11. And if we end up projecting off 10.69, we could be dipping back down to 10. My gut tells me that 10.69 may be broken right here. And we're going back up to about 11.73. So I think we're going to try to push for 10.69. We'll see if we reject or not. But my gut tells me this imbalance and these imbalances above will push us higher with Tesla. So I think that we could be pushing for 10.69 uh, than the 11s. For SoFi, we look a little bit more bullish as we're breaking and holding support very nicely. Hypothetically, if we were to lose um, 8.2 around that area, we're looking for basically 7.93. If we continue to remain bullish in this uptrend, I think we could easily get up to about 8.5 and eventually this 9 area. So I think what's going to happen is we dip a little bit tomorrow morning, retest 8.25, then balance for 8.5, and eventually we might be breaking out even higher. With the IWM Russell 2000, if we lose 218, we're looking for basically 216. And if we hold above 218, we're looking for a push for 221, then eventually 
So in my opinion, look for a dip back down to 218 and a bounce all the way back up towards the 222s. I think the IW, IWM has more upside potential because of these imbalances. So, so look for a dip and a bounce is the most likely case. For AMD, the chart remains more bullish, approaching NVIDIA's very important event, and also because of some bullish news. Uh, we had some very, very positive AI sentiment ap approaching uh, NVIDIA's big events. So I think that this could continue to push up for about 174. We also have this gap to fill at 177. Uh, as long as we don't lose 164, I think we favor upside. So it could dip down to like 168 to 169, then start bouncing for 174. So I favor upside. Uh, for ARM, we look a little bit more bullish here. If we could hold above 140, we're looking for a pushback up towards this imbalance up here, all the way up to about 143. If we lose 139, we're looking for basically 137.43. But this is favoring upside, in my opinion, for this imbalance for the 143s. For a coin... Coin looks more bullish as long as we don't lose 170. If 170 fails us, we're looking for a push back up towards 175. If we end up losing 168, we're looking for a dip back down towards 166. But this is favoring upside for that 175 area. For Amazon, we look more bullish, but that's under the assumption we hold above 186.4. If we hold above 186.4, we're looking for basically 188 and eventually much higher levels. If we lose 185.62, we're looking for a dip back down towards 184, like around the 184s. But I think we still favor upside for 188. So there's a very, very good chance we try to push higher on Amazon with Prime Day coming up. Meta is looking more bullish to me because we are on a very, very strong uptrend. We're breaking past our EMAs. We held support very, very nicely on Meta off this 20 EMA. So this is favoring 600 plus. I think it's going to be going for 600. The big 600 is likely coming. So far, Meta is favoring the upwards direction. Lots of momentum remains, so it's like a train. Meta is like a train, has so much momentum, it's not going to stop easily. It might just continue for that 600 area, and then that's going to be a tough resistance, so that could slow it down. But we'll see after that. Look for more upside. Microsoft is looking very mixed. So the problem with Microsoft is we're we're on a downtrend right now. We're making lower highs, lower lows, lower lows, lower highs, like it's continuing to fall. But the thing is, okay, we're trying to base at 414. It's trying to base at 414. If it holds this, we could be looking for a rebound for 420. If we lose this, we're going to be dumping all the way down to about 410. We'll be watching to see what kind of reaction we get because it's very mixed right now. It's trying to uh, base right here. So I'm hoping it tries to rebound to 420. We'll see about that. So we'll see if it tries to rebound here. We'll have to see if we could hold 414. And then that could be a sign that it's going to be bouncing for 420. So I do favor that a little bit more. But just to be safe, we'll have to wait. For Google, as long as we don't lose 167, we favor upside. If 167 fails, we're looking for 165. But this chart's holding 167 very nicely, so it favors 170. Then 172 is our targets. Still looks more bullish to me from a technical standpoint. For DJT, this looks more bullish with a nice inverse and shoulders like structure. Uh, if we were to lose 15.7, we're looking for a dump back down towards the 14s. If we hold above 15.7, we're looking for a bounce for 18. My guts tells me it's going to try to hold and bounce. The VIX is doing a good job at holding up. If we were to lose 18.8, we're looking for a dip to 17.94. If this holds, we could try to rebound very, very differently. But in my opinion, the way I see things, I'm thinking the VIX might see a little bit more downside because the daily is looking kind of weak right here. So I'm thinking this might dip a little bit to about the 17s because the market may push a little bit higher. But later on, okay, the VIX is going to fill this gap up to the 22s. There's another gap to fill all the way up towards... Uh, the 30s, I think it shows on the four hour, there, there are many gaps to fill. So my view of the VIX is simple. We're going to dip temporarily, okay? But there's going to be a breakout to fill all these gaps. in towards the end of October, going into November, there's going to be a big bounce. What does that mean for the stock market? The stock market is bullish right now, but it's going to turn bearish most likely as you approach the end of October going into November. That is what my view remains as. I think the VIX still suggests that. 10 years going up because of what's happening with uh, the jobs numbers. It's still looking more positive approaching that. The dollar is in the middle. It's as a tough resistance at 102.5. So we'll see if it projects or not. So give that the time it needs. But with that being said, guys, uh, that's pretty much it for my video for the, the broader markets and also for Tesla. So talking about Tesla, one more thing I want to mention is that we are looking very nice. But be careful with Tesla because what's going to happen is premiums are going to be jacked up. That's because of the fact that implied volatility is going to be going up as well. So if you're going to play Tesla, I would say to be careful with it. Uh, I would not go way too heavy, way too aggressive because it's based off of an, an event. Even if Tesla has a good event, if it meets buyer's expectations, it will pump more. If it doesn't, it could dump afterwards. So approaching the RoboTaxi event on Thursday, I anticipate upside. After the event, we will have to wait and see what happens for Tesla. 
I hope that's as clear as possible. But with that being said, I just want to say I really appreciate you guys so much for listening. Please have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. And I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow for another update before the market ends up opening. So have a great day, night, or evening, wherever you guys are around the world. Enjoy some football, enjoy some sports or time with family, whatever it is that you guys want to do. And take some time away from the markets for the remainder of the weekend. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about how things are looking. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Tesla to the moon because the long term is very bright. And peace out.